uh, on behalf of the Department of Management of the School of Business and Social Science. So I would like to welcome you all to this defense, especially you, Maria. Um, you will defend your dissertation with the title uh, Effects of Managerial Perceptions of Cultural challenges and job changes on motivational work related outcomes in the post merger integration stage of cross border merchants, border mergers and acquisitions, uh, a focus on cultural friction. Um, your mentor was Michael Sunnigal, who is here today. Um, the members of the assessment committee is also here. Uh, we have from France, Professor Philippe Berry, Edit Business School in France, and his expertise area covers mergers and acquisitions, strategy firm internationalization, and economic crime. That's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we also have uh, <laughs> Professor Schurz Sportbürgensteig. Yes. Yes. University of Groningen, the Netherlands, yes. and his areas of expertise are in international business, management, and general economics. And then there's me, I'm an uh, associate professor in Wellington from Albert University, and also the chair of the team. So, a few of your members, Madame la Présidente. Professor Marie, Professor Belgique, um, I want to address my deepest thanks for having accepted to be part of the PhD committee. And it's a great honor for me to defend my PhD works uh, in Aarhus University. Uh, during those PhD years, I worked on cross border. Uh, managers and acquisition and the human side of cross border remains with a specific focus on cultural friction. So I will briefly uh, present the, how the PhD dissertation is structured. Uh, this was basically a compilation of five chapters with the core concept of uh, cultural friction. So the first chapter, a chapter is uh, a more conceptual one where I explain how to get fresh eyes moving from the distance metaphor to uh, the friction metaphor and then I, intro I introduce also the uh, theoretical background of cross-border remedies and uh, the other concept that I use in the new institution. So basically, there is this uh, big chapter on uh, getting fresh eyes on uh, cultural distance. Uh, the second chapter is uh, more um, an exploratory set where I use a uh, grounded methodology to uh, explore cultural friction um, and using critical incident techniques to uh, interview managers, experts of cross-border enemies. A uh, rather an instrumental chapter where I developed uh, a qualitative uh, Grounded study uh, stemming from the critical incidents uh, themselves. The fourth chapter has been published as a book chapter with a very short part, but it's like a magnifying glass on the on the cultural friction instrument, highlighting face concerns as one component of cultural friction. And finally, the last chapter is a field survey where I uh, study the effect of cultural friction on work motivational outcomes with other variables, borrowing work antecedents uh, to the job characteristic model um, and, to, and also global mindset and post-major identification and all the variables I integrated it then to the job characteristic model to uh, explore, to, 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 to examine the effect on work motivational outcomes, especially to demonstrate if friction is disruptive or synergistic. The core concept of the PhD project is cultural friction. 
this concept has been defined uh, by, as a new coin, let's say by Moore and Schenker, uh, and it, is, it has been defined as the extent to which two or more entities from different countries have sovereign resist with one another in real contact or interaction over the course of the activities of transaction. So this concept comes, uh, or this metaphor, let's say, uh, sounds relevant for uh, the purpose of my study, providing a superior representation of what is the heart of the matter in international business studies, be it interaction between groups, and referring more about contacts between individuals, and that of it uh, can be either synergistic or disruptive. Starting point was a conceptual reflection on how to, to approach a well-established construct in international management, be it culture distance, um, that has been defined as the basically differences in terms of cultural values between two countries. And the question was, is it suitable to the study of managerial perception of cultural challenges in the cross-border family context? Definitely, uh, the criticism uh, described the lack of uh, theory, develop theory development. There is a conceptual ambiguity. The concept is um, the concept is overused and even sometimes misused in some study. And the conceptual representation is rather negative, uh, continuous, and symmetrical. What do we still don't know? So uh, here I try to um, <coughs> compare logic to make explicit uh, the, the gaps that have been identified and the action I have taken to overcome uh, those gaps but in a very uh, holistic uh, way not like uh, it's not like chronological so uh, still lack of understanding about the mechanisms in post major evolution stage so that's why I conducted uh, the exploratory study using a grounded approach, going back into the field uh, to see what experts uh, of cross-border areas have to teach, uh, to teach us that we don't know, uh, and um, also to, to help the understanding of the me uh, mechanism. Uh, I, in the key finding, I. Uh, Found out uh, one component of friction in the specific context of the manager that we <coughs> derived from its counseling. Secondly, the lack of convergence of distance concepts of how to better uh, understand the hidden mechanism, uh, showing that friction does exist during managerial interaction uh, to complement existing measures. I'm not saying that we have to get rid of. Uh, other measures depends on the purpose of the study, um, but we have to be uh, very careful, and this could complement and help to understand better the mechanism. So, friction um, is uh, a way to do it, and showing also that uh, it's not necessarily disruptive the cultural challenges. The third point is that we still have a lack of research at individual level in cross-border remedies, and we know that measures affect people. And uh, so, the, again, going back into the field, doing uh, the grounded study, uh, using critical incident, uh, developing an instrument, and doing the field survey of managers, answer to that uh, call to, uh, to, to that gap of uh, filling the gap of um, making the research at an individual level. And also my project combined both qualitative and quantitative approaches. And finally, the, we still have limited and insufficient understanding of how perceptions of cultural challenges may uh, affect work motivational outcomes, especially for middle management. So, I, did, I conducted this field survey, uh, borrowing the concept from job characteristic model in, um, in the motivation uh, field, 
and I use the next construction develop the global mindset and cognitive identification as variable to study the effects on work motivational outcomes. So what are the key contributions of all this work? <coughs> So, uh, from a conceptual uh, view, uh, getting through fresh eyes and uh, with a positivist approach, uh, the conflict should be regarded as a normal process in uh, important German integration uh, stage. Cultural friction causes that the differences may be either majestic or disruptive. In the study that I conducted, um, has been rather synergistic in both qualitative and quantitative studies. Um, conceptually, I could make, uh, I could end up with the definition of cultural friction. Uh, cultural friction occurs under certain conditions when individuals from different cultural backgrounds interact out and are in this call. When values, behavior, practices are incoherent to a well organized system, it provokes contradiction. This tension results from conflicting demands for individuals involved and willing to solve the dilemma. So, for that definition in the last chapter, when I um, end up with this whole uh, word. Uh, what is interesting about willing to solve the dilemma? If we don't want to solve the dilemma, of course, friction might not be so. Uh, <clears throat> and this definition is interesting also to answer, to answer your question for the future research orientation. So definitely it includes uh, our understanding of cultural factors affecting social cultural integration from the view of managers, from the view of those who are in the front lines. And it is entangled with the friction concept highlighting the component uh, of the from, from, from the methodological uh, view, uh, the friction has been operationalized. Uh, uh, Shankar has defined friction at the organizational level, but uh, so far he has not uh, operationalized friction. And to my knowledge, it has not been operationalized uh, yet. So, no other measure of cultural friction, with similar purpose, exists so far and couldn't be taken into consideration to compare the mountain. Um, the stages and guidelines for elaborating a self grounded instrument to investigate managerial perception are exhaustively described and could be replicated by other researchers. So this also is a uh, methodological contribution. And um, the use of this tool uh, to develop an index of cultural friction uh, is confirmed and has been used in a field survey. And it's definitely one way to move toward designing a rigorous tool for improved evaluation of cultural factors affecting cultural behaviors. The advantages for managers uh, to increase manager mode performance. Uh, to help uh, and to, to anticipate and to help managers uh, understanding the cultural orientations, uh, issues resulting from the evolve and the change in the range to the front border acquisition experiences, and also uh, to cultivate uh, positive emotion to reduce discomfort. That is a uh, concept of merger syndrome that has been uh, highlighted in some studies in public. Uh, among other, and developing sensitivity to face unfair and use it as a strategy and social tool to facilitate social cultural integration. I want to thank the both of you for the feedback, reviewing, constructive comments. Warmest thanks to my friends and colleagues who have done that trip to come here. Best of all to my friends and colleagues who could attend the events and my colleagues in Hatsumura. Thanks to Mikhail for accompanying me during this long trip. <laughs> thanks for, uh, for, for the presentation and thanks for the thesis. Uh, what, I, what I wanted to start out with is uh, compliment you with the, the, the nice thesis 
And especially I want to highlight something that I think that uh, not many people realize, but you've gone through the full empirical cycle. So you've gone from collecting, first reading stuff, then collecting insights by doing interviews, then designing your own survey, then administering the survey and running the regressions. So compared to, let's say, the alternative approach of I'm just downloading secondary data and I run a series of regression analysis, I, I think this is a bit, this shows that you know what you're talking about and it shows that um, uh, this approach has added value. So it's sometimes painful, it takes a lot more time compared to just downloading the numbers and crunching some numbers. But at the end of the day, I do think that you have much better feeling for a coefficient in the regression analysis or uh, what the PLS results show you uh, because you know what, what's behind those numbers. The critical incidence, you really have to, in the situation, you really have the context, the way it has been managed, the outcomes, and the, the outcomes I give them for the alternatives. And what you realize you could have done a posterior. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's kind of different. Mm -hmm. So with the narrative, I may mean, not have uh, the different alternatives uh, for measuring mm -hmm. uh, an index of friction. And also the critical incidents, I mean, maybe I'm going uh, too far, but uh, I work at a consultant in hospital training, and we use critical incidents also for developing sensitivity uh, for managers, and it's very um, helpful and efficient to develop hospital sensitivity. So I think also the critical incidents could be used on it. You are know, research in the academic field, but it could be also explored from a, a training uh, perspective. Uh, I don't think the narrative could be. Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> um, you travel a long time in time and space in order to accomplish the goal of defending your, th your PhD. Uh, in fact, you have done your PhD in your spare time, and you did not have much time to spare. Mm -hmm. So, with, with three small kids, or boys, a husband who departed at 6 a.m. in the morning and returned at 10 p.m.-ish, you only had a few moments to, uh, per day to do the work. You know. um, the challenge of your spare time to do your thesis was one of my primary reasons for inviting you uh, to come here visit us way back then. Over the many years, you persisted keeping your nose down in the track of the PhD, which also allowed you to come visit my family, uh, where we exchanged cooking experiences, <laughs> language, slang, and um, among other things. And we thank you for that. Um, so I would like to congratulate you for being at the end of a very long work process, facing so many obstacles. These days, uh, during the first official state uh, uh, visit since 1982, the President of the French Republic wished to go to the uh, power keg of the city of Copenhagen. At almost the same time, Julia Durand wished to defend her thesis at the power cake <laughs> of Ons BSS. <laughs> well, I thank both of you for your courage to pay us a visit in those circumstances. Um, your def the defense is the last stop en route for a towards a PhD project closure. Your project is about cross-border mergers and acquisitions and the cultural distance and friction in them. Um, I have a gift for you later today. I thought of giving you a meter uh, as a helper for you to measure distances as time go by. Uh, such a joke, it's a Danish joke, uh, would not fit uh, the occasion nor your project. Um, I think uh, one of the conclusions of your thesis 
And all the talk we have today is talking about uh, measuring cultural friction per definition is not linear, so you cannot use the negative. Right? <clears throat> so the friction between you and me started uh, with uh, me commenting on your beginning of your PhD project on distance. I referred to one of the key studies in the area of cultural distance differences which was measured inside a large U.S. multinational where they contributed to cultural distance understanding at three levels, individual, group, and organizational. This was at a pre-conference doctoral seminar in Vienna 2009. Well, since then, our development of friction has almost remind, well, almost reminds me of uh, the sets of uh, Tour de France. Uh, why? There are many good five points. One, uh, over the years, uh, our PhD courses and the PhD races have become much more bureaucratized and more professional as, as to the France. When you started, uh, well, you know, the contract was fine, and you, eventually, once, once you handed in the thesis, that would have been fine. But over the time, everything has become more. Um, uh, determined by rules and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, so as we talked, I became more involved uh, as, a, as a coach. Uh, so basically, also became an uh, advisor on this. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't attending in the beginning. Uh, Tour de France is uh, consists of uphill and downhill races. Uh, your right uh, towards the end has been uphill, not a lot of. A lot of uphill. So companies and people have agreed to participate uh, in that they did prior to uh, you know going there to them. Said well, well, oh now well, we can do it anyway. So there are a lot of a lot of setbacks um, that has happened during the, the the race. And the support team and the top team manager members also change over time. So. You have family members changing, and you have professional teams changing, and so on and so forth. So a lot of pain and suffering and some pleasure. Um, but as a tour de France, you're getting to the end. Uh, one of the sort of key uh, skills is endurance and persever perseverance. And this is something that you have, I don't know where they got it from, or you got it from China, or from your Chinese experience, but I mean, at least that has been part of you. Uh, and you have that those skills. So now, uh, talking about real life of an academic that starts now. So the race is not over. Um, in fact, now the real race starts. <laughs> so my wish is that your future research life may be good uphill and pleasant downhill lives. So congratulations and is it my love? So, we say, uh, congratulations and scores. Scores.